Hey folks, this is the True American Podcast, and I'm your host. Have with us a uh, well, someone who I would definitely characterize as a true American, as Mr. Tony Wheatley. He's the founder of Constitutional Kentucky. Uh, that's a nonprofit organization. They're just basically just passionately focused on educating folks in this Commonwealth about about the Kentucky Constitution. And we just received some good news that they're going to be having some sort of partnership with Turning Point USA, and I know that is going to be fantastic. Now, folks, before we get into my conversation with Mr. Wheatley today, I need to make it perfectly clear. He is speaking as a private individual. Um, his opinions are his opinions. They are not the official opinions of Constitutional uh, Kentucky. I want to make that perfectly clear. He's speaking as an individual right now. He's not uh, uh, being a spokesperson for Constitutional Kentucky. But it is important for us to know what someone like Tony Wheatley thinks about whatever the issue might be in the Commonwealth of Kentucky, because if, if he's just that kind of guy. He's a brilliant individual, got a lot of information. I have a deep respect for him. Brother, thank you for uh, coming on the show today. Well, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. Now, brother, it, I think it was like a few months ago, Charles Booker, as you know, was running against right. the incumbent, Rand Paul, Senator Rand Paul. Uh, Charles Booker, some people may not know, but he's, uh, he's an up-and-coming uh, politician within the Democratic Party. He's liberal. I would say part of the left-wing part of the Democratic Party. Uh, charismatic young black man. I believe he even has a uh, law degree from the University of Louisville. And he did a commercial s several months ago. To this day, I'm astounded at. As you know, he had a noose around his neck. And he started talking about hatred, race hatred in the Commonwealth of Kentucky and how, how far black folk have come to the Commonwealth and Kentucky and trying to connect. Uh, Senator Rand Paul to race hatred, etc., and uh, and then at the end he he made an what I found a startling uh, comment about he said two or three of his uncles were lynched. I just want to start off by just getting your general reaction, thought, response to that ad. Well. <sighs> My biggest concern with it is it, it's another way of dividing, uh, you know, not only the Democrat Party and the Republican Party, it, it's dividing races. Uh, when you look at Rand Paul's stance on racism, uh, there's nothing tells me that he is racist. Um, and when you listen to what Mr. Booker has to say, he makes that as Rand Paul's winning strategy to do so. And by doing the news thing, it's do it, it. It tears up communities. In my opinion, it's the worst thing he could have done for a, a black community. That's just my opinion, mm -hmm. and, and I think that uh, there's people that in in both sides, uh, Democrat, Republican, white, black, whatever, they want to get away from that. They're not not they're not here to uh, to build bridges or build walls. We're here to build bridges. And you're not going to build bridges with throwing a noose around your neck. I mean, look at the guy in Chicago that claimed he was, you know, attacked, and uh, he found out that he was he was definitely wrong. Uh, it cost him a lot, and it should have. Mm -hmm. And B, this was just outrageous. Yeah, I, I found it. I, I just found it absolutely remarkable that a black man in the in the 21st century would put a noose around his neck in a in a campaign in in sort of use that as to say, hey, this is why I should be elected and why the incumbent should not be reelected. Are you serious? I mean, what <clears throat> were you trying to bring across? What do you think he was trying to bring across? I don't know. It didn't work. Let's just put it that way because the people I've talked to, and I've, I've talked to people from his church, uh, people from the community where he, you know, he lives, and most of them don't uh, don't feel that was a necessary thing to do. They think it, it probably hurt his campaign more than helped it. Uh, mm -hmm. I know he's done a lot of good things for the community. Uh, I won't, you know, I, there's so many things that, that he has done uh, to wake people up, but that's not the way to do it. I mean, you, mm -hmm. that's 
Yes, like back in the hearse up to the door and saying, here, here's, here's what's going on. You're going to die. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rand Paul has never been that way, in my opinion. And, and I've followed him for years, you know. So, um, and matter of fact, I was there when he first campaigned for the first time around. And I think that uh, uh, he had a lot of help from the black communities at that time. Mm-hmm. And I think that this, Mr. Booker basically just trying to def- take away from anything good he has done. Right. And I continually just to uh, go back to historical things that, yeah, there was mistakes made in the, in the history of Kentucky and history of the United States, but things are past. And I think if you talk to the most majority of black people that that are paying attention, you now there's some not same way with, with anybody else. Uh, there are people paying attention, people not. If you're paying attention, they realize that, that uh, historically the, Black people and white people in general have have improved their relationships. Yes. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I think I, th- I think you've got a good point there. Like one thing I often say to people is that here in the Commonwealth, of Kentucky, um, it was Frank Stanley, the editor of Louisville Defender, who went to the Kentucky legislature, and he said, "Hey, we need a Kentucky Commission on Human Rights." And the Kentucky Commission on Human Rights was the leading force in, in uh, fighting uh, discrimination in housing all yeah. throughout the state. Now, that is something to, con- to think about. I mean, the Kentucky legislature at that time was not majority black, it was majority white, and they jumped on it. They said, yes, we need a Kentucky Commission on Human Rights. They funded it, and, they, uh, and the Kentucky Commission on Human Rights, they were part of their mandate was, hey, this whole thing about racial discrimination in housing, we want to end it, and we we want you guys to end it. So I, I'm not I'm not getting where uh, Mr. Booker's I'm not getting this whole lynching thing. Yeah, it's a, it's just a it's a just that's just his way of a point, pointing uh, making a, a discrimination discriminatory remark without saying it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, you know, we're we're not we don't live that time anymore. I mean, I I, I remember. The, uh, in the forties, one of the uh, a black men was lynched in Breckenridge County, where I came from. I mean, I was I, I wasn't uh, born then, obviously, but but I remember my grandparents telling me about it, and and they were the, it was the most awful thing they had ever witnessed, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, and it brought a lot of attention to to the um, times. You know, the times are, have changed. We're not there anymore, and we yeah. got people to realize that. Uh, right. You know the. A lot of people in the West End, um, you know, they're great people. And I, I've met a lot of them, and I tell you what, I, I, I'm not afraid to go into the West End. Uh, I'm not afraid to, to walk up to anybody and say, hello, I'm, you know, I'm, what can I do, or how, how can I help you, or the same way with me. If they ask me anything to help me, I'm going to ask them. Right. Uh, skin color is irrelevant at this, at this point in most lives, mm-hmm. I think. Let's, let's take this conversation real quickly to the national level. When President Biden made it, I mean, well, let, let me let me just put it this way. On a national level, if you were to listen to some of President Biden's speeches, he doesn't seem to to share your optimism or your, your positive views about race relations in the United States, you know, on a national level, you know, whole. Do you agree or disagree with that? Or what are some of your comments with some of your thoughts? Well, I agree. He doesn't. I mean, because his his agenda is to uh, keep us divided as much as he can, because it, it helps for, helps the Democrat Party. Uh, we same way with immigration. You know, we don't stand same way a toe to toe on integration because we know that he can get more votes that way. And and uh, uh, now I'm all for coming up with a plan where if somebody comes into the United States, they they've got a plan they got to work out to become a citizen. By all means, but and and I think Mr. Booker's that way too. But to openly say we're going to let everybody in and then you can start voting tomorrow, I think that's that's just well, it's not a good doesn't set good precedence for anything. And I think the uh, the fact is uh, they're going to the Democrat Party's going to do whatever it can to stay in stay in uh, power, and that's one way they're going to do it. They keep us divided. Uh, we people seem to forget that. Uh, Republican Party is, has been the one that's tried to help 
minorities more than anybody. Mm-hmm. And, and they may, and the Democrats and the left always going to make it seem like, well, we're the ones that are taking your money and not helping you any. Right. Uh, but and, and if I'm sure there's some organizations that aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing. And if they're not, they need to be shut down. But uh, whether it's Democrat, Republican, either one, but right. we need, need to uh, uh, step down. We need to sit down with, with people in, in the communities. And, and that's kind of what Constitution Kentucky does with, with different groups. We want to sit down and talk to you. We have a town hall meeting. We want to know what's going on in your area. You know, what, what issues can we help help work, work with? We can't solve all the problems, but we may give you some insight to what you can do in your community. Mm-hmm. And, and we, we bring in people from the community, their leaders, and, and we want them to discuss, open discussion. You know, right. if you don't have that, truthfully, we'll, we'll get very far. We'll get very far. Folks, we're, we're talking to Tony Wheatley. He's the founder of Constitutional Kentucky. Um, he's, not, he's not speaking at this time as a spokesperson for Constitutional Kentucky. He's just giving his personal views on, on some uh, important issues we have here in the Commonwealth of Kentucky and, and uh, in, the, in the country as a whole. Brother, I just got one or two more questions for you, but before we go to those questions, um, how can we... How can people get a hold of Constitutional Kentucky? What do you have a website, Facebook page? What? Well, we have a website and a face, Facebook page. Our Facebook page is simple because they shut us down the first time. It, it's just uh, cky.facebook.com uh, or slash facebook.com. Our, our website is uh, constitutionalkentucky.com and that's mm-hmm. Kentucky spilt out. Uh, we have uh, office phone number, which, you know, there's somebody that it gets forwarded to somebody at all times. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're happy to come into your community, talk to you. Uh, I'll come to your community anytime it, it, or any community in the state. We've got a couple things planned and uh, over the next few days, we're looking at having something November 12th uh, for Veterans Day. And that'll be a thing with U.S. team. Uh, turn turning point usa Mm -hmm. uh so we'll hopefully you know that'll turn out pretty good but uh, our our goal is to is is to get this educated kids out there on what the constitution is all about and we've had like say most communities are really open to to what's going on and and they 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 realize that uh our current administration uh especially our our national uh is stepping all over and we just Mm -hmm. we just up their eyes and say hey enough's enough right you know i i'd like to get your comment on this you know um someone said to me you know you if you don't know what rights you have you don't have that right you've lost it that's exactly right and And that's that's, go ahead that's why they stopped doing it they they basically stopped teaching it uh you know i I've had an argument with teachers over who just have never read the constitution, but yet mm-hmm. they want to tell students that, you know, came home the other day and this shocked me because somebody told her that as a little girl, she got punched by a kid in school. And I said, well, did you punch him back or what happened? She said, well, dad, I was told I can't, I'm a white girl and I can't punch a black girl, a black boy. Mm-hmm. That. I said, it doesn't matter what the color of skin is. If you want to defend yourself, you defend yourself. Right. I mean, it was a minor thing. It wasn't really big. But for somebody to tell her that, and she said it was a teacher. So I don't know. But uh, that that heartens me because this this kind of stuff just needs, that does not need to happen. Right. And, uh, you know, we, we can't go back and with the CRT programs and all that and say, well, it was my fault that things happened you know, 100 years ago any more than it, it was you know, something happened 10 minutes ago, right. but we, right. need, we just need to, to push all that aside, reach out with our hands and shake hands and say, Hey, now let's talk about the real issues. What is our problem? Right. Why can't we work together? And, and it's, it, it's, that's just common with anybody. I mean, you know, it doesn't matter the color of your skin. If you can't communicate, you've already failed. Right. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree with you more, brother, brother. Again, appreciate your time. Always love having you on. You're always educating us. You're always out there raising people's consciousness. And, and man, I think it's just so important for you to do that one thing. Make sure that people 
are made aware of the, the Kentucky Constitution. You even give out free copies of the Kentucky Constitution. We, we actually sent some to a prison the other day. Wow. Prisoners asked for it. We send it. You know, we believe it's important that no matter where you are, uh, you still have some rights. Yes. Even if you're locked up, you still have some civil rights, and we want to make sure they're not broken. So right. uh, that doesn't that doesn't require anything but uh, a few dollars to send something out, and their time to read it. But they have right. to be willing to read it. So that's that's our goal: is to get it out there. So. And that website again is constitutionalkentucky.com or dot org. dot com. dot com. And Kentucky spelled out. Yep. All right, brother. Thank you so much for your time. Hope we can do this again uh, real soon. Anytime. Thank you for having me. Take care.